Welcome to Martin Survival. You know, cordage in a wilderness living situation is definitely convenient to say the least. It's used for so many different things out here in the field. However, on the flip side, I do not see carrying man-made cordage in my pack as a necessity or a priority due to the fact I have so many yuccas and I have so many Joshua trees literally scattered throughout this entire chaparral. So wherever I go, I have cordage, natural cordage I should say, at hand. So if I need it, I can start making it. So what I try to do with my pack is I try to carry the things that are the hardest to recreate naturally out here in the field, such as a container. So a container is a very high priority in this area. Cordage, not so much, like I said. But in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to process the Mojave yucca leaf into functional cordage, and we'll also test it out. So let's go ahead and start gathering our materials. All right, so down in this wash, we have our Mojave yucca. And what I'm looking for is straight shoots, and I'm also looking for healthy shoots. I don't want any of these dead shoots that are on the plant. That's gonna be very difficult to work with. So I'm gonna go ahead and clip off a few at the base. And like I said, we'll only take what's needed. I only need a couple of them. I don't want to uh, harm or damage the plant. So we'll just start off with two. And I also wanna remove the tips because these are very, very sharp and they can cause injury. However, on the flip side, these tips are very useful for needle and thread. So we can process that down and uh, kind of split the fibers out. And uh, if we have a hole or a tear in our clothing, we can easily repair it. And uh, you'll be surprised in how durable these tips can get. As a matter of fact, I've even punched leather and cowhide using this. So it's uh, very, very durable. Now we'll go ahead and take it back and process it. Another thing I'm going to need is a baton. And right here we have an exposed juniper root. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut it. And we are going to use this, like I said, as a baton. So it does have a little bit of a natural curve to it. So I'm just going to cut it right at this curve. go and we'll go over on the same side a little bit farther down and once again cut this just like that so we have all this dead bark and this dead bark makes an excellent tinder bundle so I'm going to go ahead and save this but this heavy baton is what I want to start processing my cordage. I just wanna remove the excess bark on this baton, just like that. And I'm surprised, you know, with all that flood and monsoon rain, I would think that this would be uh, pretty far gone, but this actually has quite a bit of weight to it. And uh, like I said, that's exactly what I'm looking for when I process cordage. I want a baton that's somewhat heavy. I don't want to use a stone, especially stone against stone, because that's going to damage the fiber. We don't want that. We just want to separate the fiber. So that should be good. Okay. And we'll set the saw to the side. One thing you want to make sure you do is always keep hydrated no matter what. A simple task like this can very easily set you in an emergency situation if you're not staying hydrated. Okay, so we have these yucca leaves. As you can see, I want to remove all the dead material. So all this dead dry material I'm just going to pull off and throw that to the side. I like to get under it, remove a little bit more. 
but you can see the fiber of this plant. And yucca is used for so many things. It's a food source, it's medicinal. Uh, once again, we have rope, has saponin in it. It's a very, very good plant. And not only that, the dead stalks we can use for primitive fire. So I'm going to do the same thing with this leaf. And that should be good. Okay, now we are ready to start pounding this down. And I am actually going to use my stone tool here. This is a piece of flint right here. This has a very sharp edge to it because what I want to do is when I pound this down, I want to start scraping all of the film off of this leaf. What that film does is it's very strong and it's almost like paper. So it's gonna be very difficult to bind and twist. It's extremely stiff. So we want to make sure, like I said, we remove all of that film and we have just the fibers to make our cordage. So let's go ahead and get started. Now you're probably going to ask, well, why am I going to use a piece of flint and even this piece of granite that I picked up off the ground here that does have a good edge instead of a knife? Well, in reality, the knife is so sharp I find that it does further damage than good when trying to separate and uh, make cordage using this yucca. So I choose uh, stone tools. This has a good edge, but it's not razor sharp. That's what I want. So all I do, and we'll remove some of this. I knew that would happen, and it'll probably happen again. So what I do is I just pound on this yucca leaf, just like this. One thing I use juniper for is a dye. It has a beautiful color to it, especially the juniper out here. It's kind of a reddish tinge, reddish orange tinge to it, I should say. Very, very pretty looking dye. And uh, we can dye our clothing, dye our bags, whatever we want to blend into the earth. And that's what the natives out here would do. They would use all these plants for dye. They would even use acorns. Acorns have a purple dye to them. Okay, so now I can uh, come back with my stone and kind of remove some of that film off the top so you can see it. It's very waxy. And like I said, that stuff is extremely strong and uh, it doesn't bind well, so we want to make sure we have all of that removed. So we'll take our stone once again and we'll scrape with the fibers. We don't want to scrape it against the fibers because that once again damages it. And I'll take my granite here and I'll scrape this more. I actually have two batons. I have uh, this and I have a piece of oak and uh, not too far from me towards my base camp I have a piece of gina berry so uh, that might work as well. Okay. 
so you can kind of see what we're getting at here we're breaking this up see that it's exactly what we want want to just break that up and separate the fiber Now we have all of our yucca processed. You can see we split the fibers. Well, we expose the fibers, I should say. And um, we also remove the film on the top. So all I wanna do at this point is now make my cordage. So I'll take uh, some of it, depending on what you're going to make. So say I was going to make a, uh, a bow drill, I would want a good amount of it. And all I do is I pinch at the top, I find the two even ends, and I pinch right there, and I make a nine, just like this. So at this point, I am going to twist away as tight as I can go, and with my middle finger, I'm going to grab underneath and pull towards me. So once again, twist away tight, pull towards me. Twist away, pull towards me. Twist away, pull towards me just like that and I just repeat the process all the way to the end just like this twist tight pull towards me now once I start reaching these two tag ends what I need to do is I need to make a splice because I want to make my cordage nice and long especially to string up a shelter or make a bow drill and right here, I have another piece of yucca about the same diameter as this, and I find the two tag ends and I trace that down. Okay, so now I kind of make a, uh, a pinch at the top, just like that. And I place that directly in the center of the cordage that I'm working on, so you can see what we have here. And once again, I just repeat the same process. Twist away, pull towards me. Twist away, pull towards me. And just keep on going down and down and down. Just like this. And we want to repeat the same process once we start getting towards the end. So you can see what we have. Our cordage is thin up top, but it starts getting thicker down here. And that's exactly where I made this splice, right down there. So again, we're gonna repeat the same process nice piece of cordage about the same diameter got a little bit of wax on there that's okay we can remove that pinch up top place it directly in the center and do the same thing now this yucca it will start to get dry on you so the best thing to do with this cordage is to make it around a water source to where you can soak it and uh, get the fiber nice and wet. It's much easier to work with. So here we have it. Here's our cordage. As you can see, we started off with a very small piece. We spliced and worked our way down. Uh, this current diameter is about what I would use for a bow drill. So if I was gonna make fire by friction, 
I would harvest a couple pieces of juniper and start carving my set and this is what I would use to string it with. Of course I would want to go a few more feet and then tie it up. If I'm making a shelter, just want to string a tarp shelter, I'm going to be here for quite a while, but it's well worth it in the long run. I mean this stuff is strong too. You are not going to be able to break it. This has a very high tensile strength, so no matter how much pressure I put on this thing, it is not going to break. As a matter of fact, this is one of the strongest plant fibers that I have ever used in the field. This Mojave Yucca works excellent and the native peoples around this area knew that. The Serrano, the Cuya, the Chemoavi would use this for just about everything. Uh, they would use this as a bow sling, they would use this for traps, they would use this for basketry, sandals, and rope for lashing. So this is a very useful plant and uh, getting out there learning this skill and actually getting the hands-on experience is extremely important with any task in the bush. What I thought I'd do is show you exactly how strong this can be. I'll take this yucca cordage and I'll just wrap it around this juniper limb and I'm going to pull. So we'll actually de-limb some of this uh, dry material that we can use for firewood. And gathering your firewood this way is going to prevent splintering and it'll save your hands in the long run. So we'll save this for later. All right, folks, so that is just about going to do it for me today. Once again, I do appreciate you joining me for this video. I'm Jeff with martinsurvival.com, and we'll see you in the next one.